Hi Hodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hodemess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be doing a long form review of the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. If you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. My channel has a couple ethos that I like to run on, but one of them is to love my makeup collection as it currently is. But I'm well aware that every now and then there's a makeup release that I get really excited about whenever I see it getting like sneak peeked on trend mood and all of that. And so what I really like to do is try to be very considerate when I bring something new into my collection and I thought that the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation was going to be a really good fit for me which is why I purchased it. So if loving your collection as it is sounds good to you and is the type of content you want to normally see I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video and I'm also on Patreon if you would like to support me there. How I run my foundation reviews as you can see this is probably a very lengthy runtime. What I do is I put chapters down there for you so you can click to whatever portion of the video that is the most interesting to you. So I like to run through ingredients, I like to run through the claims and what the company says that the foundation should do, what their promises are for the particular product that we're walking through. And then I put it through four days of testing. And I, the first three days I just do different applications. So I do a hand application, a sponge application, and then a brush application. And then I do a wear test. So if you wanna see one of those four things, They'll be linked down there for you as well. Before we get into the rest of this, I want to tell you a little bit about my skin type. I have pretty oily skin, but my preferences for foundation don't really align with what a lot of people with oily skin look for. I definitely like a very healthy glow to my foundation, so something radiant, something dewy is something that I'm actually very interested in, and I actually don't have very blemish prone skin, so I don't really break out too easily and my skin's not super sensitive. So I am typically looking for light coverage, light to medium coverage, which is typically my preference and what I really really like in a complexion product is blurring. That's like my favorite thing when I see that word. That's a word, that's a buzzword, that's a selling word that gets me ooh, 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 so excited. I think that's all the heads up that I have to give you. So let us jump in to the whys. Why did I buy this? Why was this something that I considered buying as I do try to keep in check my budget? I am budgeting this year. I if you want to see more on that, I will link a playlist in the cards for you to check out. Here's why I bought the Hourglass Foundation. Here it is sitting behind me. It's on display. Just keep your eyes on that. I don't feel like holding it. That's a that's a you thing if you want to look at it. I mean, obviously, there will be close-up shots of it. Don't, don't you worry. But as of right now, she lives back there. Not up in the forefront with me. Hourglass is a brand sketch sketchy they're not very shade inclusive it's not their best quality however hourglass makes a couple products that i really really enjoy i love their bronzers which they need to extend the shade range on i love their blushes which are really really lovely and i love their ambient lighting powders so when i saw this and it had the word ambient in it i was like is it supposed to look like look like i already have the powder on before i powder because that is something that I am very interested in. Also the claims of blurring pores, we just like, we, these are all things that really speak to me. And since I already love all of these other things from Hourglass, I thought that this would be a really, really good fit for me. And I was really excited about it. And so that's why I ended up purchasing it. I also, just for full disclosure, I do try to take into consideration that things that my audience would be interested in as well. But ultimately the budget that I have for makeup is for me <laughs> and not really for my channel. So I have to also really want to buy an item to review it. And it was actually between this and the new Tenti Dole Foundation from Lancome, the one that has the more luminous finish, but uh, this felt more in line with what I was interested in reviewing for now. You think I would have the Docs app downloaded? That's where I take all of my notes so I can read them on my videos. You think I would? have it downloaded but I haven't used it in a while so my phone offloaded it and of course it's taking forever to download as I'm in the midst of recording. Let's get into some fun facts, a little little bullet list of things that this product is 
and what it is is $58. It, you get one fluid ounce. It's vegan. It promises a natural finish. It's long wearing, cruelty free, and it has medium coverage and it comes in 32 shades. This is like my favorite part of these videos that I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the claims directly from Hourglass's website, the way the artistry, how they love to, how they're trying to sell this fantasy to us. And then I record a very, very silly, very poorly put together commercial in order to sell the product. But that's, to, that's you'll get close up shots and you'll get, things of me dancing most of the time is typically how it goes. So I'm going to get into the voiceover and enjoy this commercial. A weightless liquid foundation that delivers 16 hour medium buildable coverage with a natural soft glow finish. Inspired by the iconic ambient lighting collection, this long wearing formula is infused with blurring spheres that provide a light diffusing effect, minimizing the look of imperfections for skin that looks smooth, even and glowing in any light. The fluid texture is easily blendable and delivers second skin finish for a complexion that looks seamless and lit from within. Let's talk a little bit about the ingredients. Uh, for important context, I don't know everything about ingredients and I do my research. And when I do my research, I'm very well aware that there is like almost no perfect way to do research on ingredients because there are websites where people can buy a better review for ingredients. It's like a whole thing. I do want you to know that I do look ingredient by ingredient and I try to make my best judgment of what that ingredient is doing in the formula and what it's supposed to do for us as the consumer but I'm never talking about ingredients in a fear mongering way. I'm never trying to tell you that something is bad because there are ingredients that some people are going to be okay with using that other people aren't and vice versa. And that's totally okay. And it's not about fearing. It's not trying to instill fear. So when I'm talking about an ingredient that I feel suspicious about, it's mostly because it's like, Oh, I feel a little suspicious about that, but it didn't stop me from putting it on my face. And I think that's important context to keep while I talk about ingredients, because here's the thing. How often do you look at the ingredients in your cosmetics? And a foundation is one of those things that goes all over your face. So I just think it's one of those, it's, it's a thing that I like to pay a little bit of attention to, but I even don't even look at the ingredients until after I've done my wear testing, because I don't want to look at the ingredients and feel like some kind of way about an ingredient while I'm testing it and be like, well, that's the reason. That's like <laughs> that what I'm trying to do. So if I ever mention an ingredient that you feel no kind of way about, that's great. Or if I ever react to an ingredient and go, huh, um, I'm not sure that I wanna put that on my face or the, the amount that seems to be in this product seems a little bit high. It's all just, it's all just to like think about it it's not to tell you what's right and what's wrong when it comes to cosmetic formulation. So whatever works for you works for you. I'm, I'm delighted to report that I actually looking through the ingredients, there was like no ingredients that like seemed weird, seemed like a cause for concern and nothing that seemed like a, a new innovative technology either, or nothing seemed like different about this formula because I have done a couple of foundation reviews where like the formula was just so different. When I do this, normally you kind of come across the same ingredients over and over again. And essentially that's the same here. This has glycerin in it, which is a humectant, which is a very popular ingredient. It helps keep the moisture. It helps take moisture from the air and like put it into your skin. It's a great ingredient. Also the formula is alcohol free, which is really great, which is weirdly something that's not very common in new foundation releases that I've been finding as I've been doing foundation reviews on my channel a lot of them have alcohol in them and I was like really I was pretty surprised by that that so this one is alcohol free but it is not silicone free and I just want to talk about this for a second I'm not someone who has any issues with a silicone being in my foundation and I understand that silicones are often the thing that do the blurring they're the ones that blur they're the ones that give you that illusion that your skin is perfectly smooth and has no pores so I don't ever view silicones as like a negative thing but I guess something that I did find interesting that there are I think I counted correctly, 31 ingredients minus the actual pigments, the actual pigments that make them the color they are. There are 31 ingredients and 10 of those ingredients are silicones or silicone adjacent, which that's one third of the formula is a silicone or some of some type of silicone. And that's like, you know, I might've read that wrong, but I do think that, I think I'm, I think I'm right because a lot of them had like the cone. <laughs> There's a lot of the cones. I'm a thick cone. <laughs> I'm a thick one. That felt pretty excessive to me when it came to the amount of silicones. I just, it felt like a lot. It felt like a lot. And retrospectively, I think something clicked with that whenever I was looking at the formula. But 
that's for us to find out later on in the video. I think the only thing that I would rate that raises caution is that when I was looking through the ingredients and what they do, there were a handful of ingredients that clean like that when I was doing my research said that they were film forming, which leads me to believe that this formula may not be non comedogenic. So it's comedogenic. That's my guess is that it is. I don't I'm, I don't want to say like for sure or not for sure. But anything that has like a film forming agent is something that's going to like essentially clog pores. So I don't know how this would do with someone who has very acne prone skin because, you know, clogging pores is not really going to be great for you because I don't have your skin. And so my best recommendation to you is that if you are interested in this formula, once it gets into store, to sample it to see what your skin reacts at all to it because I I can't I don't know what ingredients are going to trigger acne for you I just went on what I read it just seemed that potentially one could break out from this if they had really acne prone skin I did say at the top that I don't really have acne prone skin but I didn't have any breakouts or anything like that from wearing this foundation when I was wearing it so that's all I can speak to. We're about to get to the wear test. Just as a reminder, we're going to start with a hand application, then it'll transition into a sponge application, then that will transition into a brush application, and then you'll get to see the wear test. So I'm just going to pass it over to me so you can see what happened. <laughs> Does this blouse say distinguished to you? Do I look distinguished? Anyway, it's been a long time since I've done one of these, and of course you're already seeing aftermath right i've already done this process you've already seen some of me but i haven't done a foundation review in a really long time and i think it's like when i say a long time it's like been a couple months today we are going to be applying with our hands for the first time first impressions the hourglass soft glow ambient foundation and so here's what it, the box that it comes in this is very typical for hourglass packaging the shiny brown carton is very typical for them and i've already seen the bottle but i haven't like touched the product at all yet so here is what it comes in and this is a glass bottle it feels like a glass bottle and i got the shade one i got the, i got the lightest shade so um here's the deal <laughs> here's the deal when it came to choosing a shade i didn't go in store i did order online i i do an okay job most of the time ordering foundation shades online to like sight unseen in real life however just from working at sephora knowing the hourglass shade range being like sketch at best from working there when i was matching people i figured i should go with the latest shade because hourglass often pulls yellow and also pulls dark so i did get the lightest shade hoping that i would be right like that looks light in the well actually it doesn't look too off from me but it is a it does appear to be like a frosted glass bottle what i'm going to do now is apply with my hands we're going to do this side of the face first i will check in with you zoom you in so you can see the difference in the sides and then i will finish my face and then i will report back about how i think it's going i just want to check the viscosity of this with you so i'm gonna put this in sorry for the reflection i probably will have to pump a few times it's not super liquidy i don't think there's a scent to it i can smell the bobby brown vitamin enriched face face because it has a scent like a light scent to it but i'm not smelling anything in the hourglass so I'm going to just, it might be a little light. <laughs> it might be a little light. I really thought I was like, I don't know, but we'll blend it in. We'll blend it in. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to blend this in real quick. So it is pretty starkly light for me. Unfortunately, I do think my face is like deepened by like the, the slight redness that I have because it's like not too far off from like the whiteness of my chest. So it's like one of those interesting things. It might look better once I have it on, but you can definitely tell how much coverage there is. I'm going to finish my face.
So a couple of things are happening. I'm sweating because it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> and I have a fan going, but I still feel like I'm sweating. And that is like specifically on my forehead here. I just feel like that the foundation isn't like laying that well because of that. I'm really trying to figure out if th this, I mean, you're probably screaming at home like it's a, a horrid foundation match. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that it like, is <laughs> like I just think that I'm so accustomed something that matches me maybe just it does look like I'm a floating white head okay I'm gonna have to head to Sephora to <laughs> exchange this I just think that a couple of things are happening one it's more coverage than I've had in quite some time as far as a foundation that I've reviewed I would say right now with my hand application we're at medium coverage so this is not a foundation just texturally that I would say I would want to apply with my hands. Like it doesn't have like that. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. It's, it's not, it's pretty viscous. It's pretty viscous. And as I'm like rubbing the remnants between my fingers. Okay. So now it looks less crazy to me. We have experienced an unprecedented moment in one of my foundation reviews. I actually really bought the wrong foundation shade. So let me tell you about this is an aside, and I will leave a timestamp up here if you want to just skip to the part where I actually reapply. As you saw, I bought the wrong shade. My choice to leave that in is just because sometimes that happens, and it's not a big deal. And so I did go to Sephora today, and I got the right shade. I'm going to let you know how that had to go. So I was checking on Sephora on their website, and I saw that I could not buy and pick up in store, which means that they're not in stores yet. However, having some Sephora insider knowledge, I gave the store a call. I gave one of the stores a call. I was like, hi, I bought this online, blah, blah, blah. You know, told them the situation. And it turns out the stores had them, but they're not on the displays yet. So no, you can't go buy this in store. But they did a very nice thing for me and allowing me to exchange my shade in the store. And they did a color match for me. So I started with one and now I have 2.5. So let's see. How we did i mean i had it on my face and it looked like a pretty good match definitely looks much more my speed however what i learned yesterday when i was trying on the wrong shade is that this foundation has a lot more coverage than i'm i'm actually typically used to so i'm gonna actually apply a lot less today and i think the combination of me knowing the coverage a little bit better and having a more correct shade this time really will benefit my experience because I really couldn't come up with any commentary on it yesterday because I was like, this shade is really wrong. I'm going to prime again with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this will not end up being the primer that I end up liking it with the best. But again, I'm going in with so much more knowledge about the product just from trying it on once. So I didn't leave all of the footage that I took yesterday, just like up until the point where you could see that I had the wrong shade and edited some other things in because I would think I was so distracted by the way the shade match looked with. It was really alarming to me. Okay, so I am gonna apply with my hands again today and I have gonna take much less. So we're looking good. What I've kind of learned, what kind of, what I learned during this fiasco was that there's like this ring of more intense yellow around. What is on my shirt? There's like this ring of yellow that's more intense around my neck. And then like the rest of me is more neutral, but there's like this weird yellow. So I just need a neutral foundation and the, the palest shade, if it, I think if it had more yellow in it, it would have worked okay, but it didn't. Okay. I'm going to blend this out and then we'll talk. Foundation, no foundation, much better match, <laughs> much better. We're at a much better place, but still quite a bit of coverage, even with me using significantly less product today, still quite a bit. But I will also say with using less product today, it did feel better in my hands. One of the things that I, when I was applying yesterday, I just, it was like so messy. There was like so much. Okay, I'm gonna do the other half of my face and then I will zoom you in so you can take a closer look. Fully applied. Yeah, definitely liking this match. 
a lot more. I still have some product left over, but before I go over to see how it layers, I'm gonna zoom you in so you can take a look at to see the coverage and what it looks like before I do anything else to it. Here's what I will say so far that I actually I like the way it looks on camera better than it looks in person in person well it doesn't look bad in person I just think that like the effect is is definitely gonna like the effect of this so far obviously this is just day one I think you're gonna get really get that blurring both in photos and like in video but and just because of the way like lighting and everything hits it but I don't know that about in person I have a little bit of redness right here I'd like to cover up I'm gonna try to put a little more on my nose but it also didn't really play well on my nose yesterday but I think I had more product than it intended so I'm gonna just try to build it up right here on this redness and just tap it in to get a little more coverage so that layered really beautifully I have some redness on the peaks of this cheek too. It's like not as severe as what's going on with this cheek right now. It feels like there's a little bit of a breakout happening there. It does kind of have, I mean, so far, it does remind me of the finish of whenever I put dim light, if you are familiar with the Hourglass Ambient Powders, and this is like their ambient foundation. It is sort of giving me the vibe of the ambient powders if you were ever used the ambient powders I feel like I am getting that glow so like I have the powder dim light and I do feel as though that I'm getting like that quality glow but it's not like it looks wet in person it just like has like that look and if you don't know what I mean I, the best way to describe it is like the ambient lighting powders to my knowledge are they're designed to be like worn in specific lights I think and just like it is supposed to like kind of give the effect as if you were in that light so like you know how when you're in dim lighting you get like that sexy glow when light just hits you so so I like when the, as you can see like when the light's hitting me I think that's what I think that's what they're trying to do with this foundation it's like get the effect of it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to powder with the Pat McGrath Light One Powder. And why I like to use this versus any of my other powders, my other powders, like, they promise a lot of blurring. And the Pat McGrath Powder does, it's, like, really, really nice just, like, setting powder. And it does, you know, a little bit, but it does, like, the least of the powders that I currently have in my collection. It's not, like, for blurring. It's not, like, one of the key promises of it. So I'm going to powder it, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like after it powders. Let's see if it still holds on to this nice glow. I probably, sh I always forget to say this when I'm doing these, but I never use concealer when I'm doing a foundation review. I don't. So I still feel like I'm getting that beautiful effect that I think that this, this foundation really wants to have. But something tells me that this, and we'll see over the next couple days, that this foundation, I already know it has more coverage than I want. Or more coverage than I, I can, uh, let's say more coverage than I usually want because I don't want to try to exclude this and like make it sound like I'm not going to give it a chance but I'm, cer I'm certainly going to give it a chance but a way to have lighter coverage is to apply less but I have this feeling that it's going to do a lot because it's doing a lot more perfecting than what I'm used to in a foundation a lot of the foundations that I typically wear a lot that I really like are the kind of formulas that are really about giving the visual blur as opposed to giving a lot of coverage and so it's like your skin looks really nice and healthy but still looks like skin that I think that this formula is gonna really encourage me to like wear more so like I saw that imperfection there but all of the skin around it looked really really much not that my skin looked bad before I put on foundation, but like the little bit of redness here versus like how the foundation really perfected the skin around it was like, well, now I need to like make sure that this is definitely as covered as the rest. And so the first round didn't cover it. So I had to go in for a second round. Does that make sense? It's like, I think I'm going to consistently have to wear more coverage than I typically desire. But there's nothing wrong with that. I, there's like a time and a place, I think, for like a foundation with more coverage. And I don't have anything like this. So if things work out after all of my testing, 
it's a really beautiful foundation. I could see me keeping it around just for being like, when I really want to do like more coverage, but that is certainly not something I'm always looking for. I like my foundation, not that this was difficult, but I like my foundation to be like much easier. I to pay like, like I like paying less attention to it, but I do, I like where we're, I like where we're headed so far. I'm going to put powder products on top of it for my face and then I will report back just so you can see how it looks after I have done my full face. I know that doesn't really mean much, but it's mostly to see like how things perform over it. I'll be back in just a moment. So I just did some contour bronzing blush and then what I did instead of using like a traditional highlight I actually used the hourglass dim light it's one of the ambient powder ambient powders and this has ambient in the title this foundation has ambient in the title so I'm I'm hoping that my suspicions are correct and I do all of my research after I like my research on ingredients and stuff after I have used this so I learn more about the marketing and stuff after but what I wanted to try to hint at so along here that's where I put the ambient lighting powder and you can kind of see that effect all around over my face so like obviously this is a really concentrated area of it you see a lot of that glow but you can see hints of that all throughout my face because I think that's what's supposed to be happening here I, this product doesn't seem to really like my nose. <laughs> That's what I'm learning so far. I mean, I did try to build it up a little bit there, and I don't know if that worked out in my favor. But what I will say is that yesterday under my eyes, it looked really creepy. And I think it's just because I had too much product because I'm not having that again today. But I really, I'm appreciating this finish quite a lot. I am curious to see how this will play with the sponge. I have an, I have an instinct, a guttural instinct that that, the case will be that that will be the way I like it the most that or a brush I just didn't like the way it felt between my fingers and I don't believe so I don't believe actually that this has SPF in it but it kind of felt like it had SPF in it so that was like the feeling it had in it so I'm just taking a quick look at the ingredients I was just trying to make sure that it doesn't promise that there's SPF in it but I was wondering if like it had some sneaky just like a sneaky little something in there like not enough to qualify it as an SPF and like be able to mark it as that but perhaps still have some in it I'm actually not gonna do well I don't have any natural light I'm doing this in the evening because I, I got the foundation replacement today so during the day and so i'm just gonna leave it at this for day one the end of day one we've had quite the journey thus far with this foundation but it's looking much better than it did i'm going into tomorrow knowing that less is more and that's okay much better match but for the fact that this is 2.5 <laughs> still fairly light but also impressed that they were able to go as light as the porcelain shade that i tried yesterday all right let's transition to the sponge application Ooh. we're here for the sponge application the moment no maybe no one's been waiting for i don't normally like applying my foundation to the sponge but sometimes it turns out to be the best way to apply certain foundations i actually feel like i want to switch up the primer today too not that i didn't like the bobby brown underneath it but i do feel like i had some performance issues right around the nose area so i will be trying the pat mcgrath one today not my favorite primer but not a bad primer. So I do feel that this has more of a pore filling situation that happens than the Bobbi Brown, but that's okay. We already kind of have seen what it looks like without the pore filling. And I don't think that this really does that much, this primer. Like I wouldn't recommend it to you. If, if you're new here, you know I'm just trying to really finish up the bottle, but I think it's worth trying something different primer wise underneath all right we're gonna do half of my face and then i'll check in with you all right i'm gonna take a dampened beauty blender and go at it foundation no foundation okay i'm gonna do the other side of my face and then i'll discuss
completely applied. We're all set. I'm gonna fix my hair and then I'm gonna pull you in so you can take a look at the skin. So here are some thoughts now that I have applied it with the sponge. Definitely liked it better with the sponge than with my hands. I feel like the application was more even. I think the dampness of the sponge thinned out the formula enough to allow it to spread a little bit better. I do feel like I also got more coverage this time too. Like I feel like the coverage was more apparent. Like I, yesterday I felt the need to like tap up to build on top of my redness. And today I do feel, well, also, my redness could just be more neutralized than it was whenever I did that application, but I also just don't feel like I need to put it on my cheeks. I have leftover product. I I have not been using like a full pump for each side. I would say like maybe like 75% of a pump for each side. So that's where this gets me. However, a negative for the sponge application is I actually feel as though the qualities that made it ambient yesterday are like i don't know if the damp sponge mess with those qualities like it's a little bit there you can kind of see it but like it was much more apparent yesterday and it's much it's much less apparent in real life i'm only really seeing it in the camera i'm not really seeing it in, in real life like i'm only seeing that little bit of glow in the camera i gotta say i really don't i don't think i like this foundation so far like i'm not i'm not a fan it's not it's not like i feel like it's bad but so far i don't think it's worth 50 dollars where i have more expensive foundations that i would happily pay full price for again because of how they work on my skin i think the biggest downfall is that it kind of lost that ambient light quality but also let it be known that like that was the sponge so ha perhaps tomorrow i'll apply it with the brush and we will have that quality and it will all come together and it will be something that I really enjoy. But so far, I'm not like super impressed with it. I have been told, I haven't really watched any other reviews, but I have been told that other reviewers are saying that it's just okay. And that I think so far, that's where I'm landing. I've also heard, I've not really tried many other liquid products from Hourglass, but I hear that, that this is always where they like falter a bit. Their powders are really lovely. I mean, I can't speak to their eyeshadows, but all of their cheek stuff, like their complexion and cheek stuff in the powders, very nice. It's like the liquid stuff that they typically have issues with. Uh, I'm not considering this a fail by any means, but certainly not loving it. Like I'm not looking forward to using it tomorrow. It's feeling more like a chore, a little more like a chore. When I think of when I tried the Chantecaille foundation or when I tried the Merit complexion stick or even when I was trying the Ritual Defi three drop foundation, which I kind of even ended that being like, I don't really know how I feel about this, was really always excited to be using them. I'm, I, it's, I'm not really feeling that way about this, which is, it's unfortunate, especially at the price point at which it is. We still have one more day to go, so this could be too soon, but I like to check in with my feelings every day. First and foremost, I think going forward, I have to really make sure whenever I'm buying a foundation that it is the coverage I like. I don't like how, I feel like my face is flat. And while I've uh, I've used other full coverage foundations or like medium coverage foundations where I don't feel like my face looked flat, I just feel like it's it's like I'm I have as Evanescence once said I have to it bring me to life bring me to life, and I just I just don't think that this this foundation is doing that. It's just an unfortunate way that I'm feeling about it so far. Today I'm gonna layer creams on top of it just to see how it plays with the creams, and then I will check in with you and show you what it looks like after that.
having a couple of thoughts. I'm I'm having some thoughts, some wondering. I can't imagine this was the case, but I'm wondering if the Pat McGrath primer could have also been part of the reason that what made the foundation feel a little more special yesterday is like maybe maybe perhaps my primer sucked the life out of it. So tomorrow I'm going to go back to the Bobbi Brown and then on my own time I'm going to try some I tried again with the Pat McGrath to see if that's how I feel about it. However, I just used the cream products that I always use on top of it and it was not really a pleasant experience. Nothing lifted, but things didn't really want to blend out on top of it. And when I tell you like these are products that I always use, the contour from Fenty always really blends like a dream, isn't normally too much fuss. The Chanel Le Beige bronzer, always like an a mostly effortless product for me. I feel like it was tough to work with on top of it. Phytosurgeon's Skin Spark Blush, also something that is like a tried and true product for me at this point. And it like just felt like it was a struggle to get them all on my face. And like, I didn't enjoy the experience. Like I was able to get them there, but it felt like fussy. It felt fussy and that makes me feel fussy. If with the brush and the Bobbi Brown tomorrow, I feel like the magic that came with the first day with the hand application comes back, that then we'll, we'll, we'll try cream products on it again, just to see if it was like a fluke. And I hope it is, I hope it is a fluke, but today is feeling like a pretty big bust for the Hourglass Foundation. Not super pleased with it. I have some daylight today, so I will show you this makeup in natural light and overhead light, and then we will get right into the brush application. Here it is in natural light. It's looking pretty snatched in the natural light. So I'll give it that. Let's check overhead light. Let's walk to the messy part of my room. The part of my room where every time I film, if I, my room is messy, I throw all the stuff that I don't want you to see. I'm gonna turn the lights up. They're a little dim. I think in this light you can still, you can see the flatness that I was talking about a little bit. Like the only parts of my face that have life are the places where I created it. Which isn't great, which isn't great. Is a male on the eyes though. I don't know about this. All right, it's brush day. I'm feeling galvanized and rejuvenated and I'm really hoping that the Hourglass Foundation is gonna work a lot better today. Number of things, if you recall, I use a different primer than I did the first day, the second day. I'm gonna go back to the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Second thing, my brushes were dirty, but I've never had an issue with product cream products blending on top of other things at that level of dirtiness before, but I did wash them in preparation for the application of foundation today. So we are working with fresh brushes. And so hopefully that will also improve today's experience. And I do need to note before we start, I was demoing some glitter things on my face on my Instagram before doing this, but I did try to remove them. I taped them. I tried to like take as much off, but if you see Erin glitters, that is the glitters, that is not the foundation's fault. I'm gonna prime my face with the Bobbi Brown. I'm gonna be using a Sonia G brush to apply the foundation today. Typically when I apply a foundation with a brush, for whatever reason I still like to dot it on with my fingers before blending it out with a brush. So I'm going to do that, but I will be blending with the brush, but applying it with my fingers if that makes sense. And as always, I will do one half of my face, check in, and then we will do the other half of my face. The way I just looked down as if my mirror was somewhere where it literally was not. Foundation, no foundation. And I'm gonna do the other side of my face and then I'll check in with you. Here we are. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can take a closer look. Definitely, this is my preferred method. I'm probably, I'm fairly certain this is probably the way that Hourglass wants you to apply this foundation. So I do feel as though we have that ambient effect 
has come back with this application. So I'm not sure if it was the sponge or the primer that I used yesterday, but something wasn't doing. Something wasn't right about the way it was applied yesterday. This is much prettier than it was yesterday. Let me know if you can even see what I'm talking about, like if you even can tell, but I just feel like my skin doesn't look as lifeless as it did yesterday. I have a little bit of foundation left over. I still have some redness on this part of my cheek, so I'm gonna apply more there. I have a little bit of excess product. I'm just gonna blend it down my neck because I have it. I will also say that I made a concerted effort to use less foundation today. So the other days I had to pump twice. Today I only pumped one pump and I was able to do both sides of my face. So I was really limiting how much. And I know a lot of people mostly use one pump, but I often end up using two pumps when it comes to foundation and then like because I like pull it through my beard and whatever, but I, because I was having such issues with like, I didn't really like the amount of coverage. I did use a lot less, but I still feel like we are in this medium coverage range immediately. Like I, I don't get to choose anything lighter than that. I mean, I'm sure if I even applied less product, I would, you know, but I do feel like this is also the kind of coverage that one would want if you were buying this formula. So that's definitely a personal preference, but I definitely think that is the way to go. I didn't mind the hands. I just don't always prefer the hands, but the brush was like pretty good. I'm gonna be brave and bold. I'm gonna do the rest of my face. I'm gonna do creams again and see if I run into the same issue that I ran into yesterday. So we can really get to the bottom of whether or not creams actually don't perform on this. Cause I didn't want to say that as a blanket statement without testing it again. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so we have on the full face, I, the full face, well, I just am doing my base today. So I use the Fenty Cheeks Out, the Chanel Le Beige Bronzer, I use the Fido Surgeons, and then I use this Pat McGrath Stick Highlighter on top. That's how we got the look today. The foundation looks a lot better today. I have to say that I wanted to love this, and I think it's just like, I'm, I don't love it. And I'm landing on like, it, perhaps it's all right, but I actually really didn't like using creams on it. For whatever reason, oftentimes, most of the time, on, with foundations that I really enjoy, using cream products on top of them is like a breeze. Like it's just like, you put it on, you blend it in, but something about this foundation doesn't really want me to be able to, to experience that with joy. Almost in a way like where it tugs on my skin and I might be inclined to blame the other products, but like these are products that I use all of the time. So it's not like I don't know how these products work with other products other foundations, the foundations that I always keep in rotation, something about it, it just like doesn't want to. It's not that I can't get it blended out, but it just like feels more work, like more work on this foundation. It was easier today. So I think there was like a couple things happening, but I think ultimately that this is a foundation that if I were to wear it all the time, it would be, I would almost exclusively use powder products on top instead of using creams. Because I had tapped in the highlight, that went in really easily, but that's like a really easy way to like get things to go in. And you might be saying, well, you could have tapped in all the other cream products, which is like a true statement. I could, but that's not how I typically like to put them on. Cream highlight, yes. But like cream blush and cream bronzer, no, I wanna use a brush. 
Well, I still think my face looks really good. The final result is really good. There's, there's more physical work being put in to make this happen. And I don't love that. So curious to see how it will wear, but I don't think this is a foundation that I'm going to be keeping around, even if it wears all day tomorrow. There's something about this foundation that I feel like let down by. And I don't really know what that is, but maybe I'll have to unpack that at another time. So yeah, I don't think this is the video for that, but maybe I'll talk about it in its own separate video. And I'll talk about my experience using this foundation and how it's been making me feel. It's not good, but it's not really because of the foundation and like how bad it looks. It's just like, not good. <laughs> Okay, I'll show you an overhead and natural light, and then we will move on to the wear test. Here we are in natural light, where I think that this foundation performs its best, but I think in a realistic world, we all know that one will not always be in natural light, unless you have like an office on the corner with a window. This is not gonna be your lighting situation at any given time. It's like barely my lighting situation in my room because Let's go to the lights overhead. I will say overall, the brush was like definitely the way to go. I just think it looks the best out of all of them. I even think it like did the best on applying it to my nose, which was like always a problem area for me, but like specifically with this foundation. Do you like this whole thing? Of I use my Peloton. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. But sometimes I'll just set a beverage there. I don't want to hear anything about it, okay? Hello. Good morning. It's 5.33 a.m. We're doing our wear test. I'm just going to speed through this so you can watch me put it on. I'll do an hour... <clears throat> Goodness gracious. I'll do a check-in four hours in, and then at the eight-hour mark-ish, I will check in with you to see how it wore. For context, I'll be using the Bobbi Brown and the Pat McGrath Labs powder to make this happen. I will see you on the other side of this. Hi, it's 10 o'clock, so it's been a little over four hours. We're looking shiny, we're looking dewy. It looks a little bit better worn in. It does look a little bit better worn in. This is natural light. I'm gonna take you to the bathroom and so I can look at myself in a mirror instead of through the camera. House tour, reverse house tour. Um, dirty bathroom door. Kerastas, whatever, it's no big deal. Mm -mm, it's not doing. So this kind of happened with the, if, for the real ones who were here when I reviewed the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, it's kind of doing that thing where it feels like a mask and it feels like it's gonna fall off, right? It looks 
heavy. It, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest with you, it does not feel heavy. It doesn't feel like I have like a ton of makeup on my face, but I will say that it does like look heavy. Um, quick aside, this is one of those Auric, I think they're called Smoke something. A beautiful subscriber who wished to remain anonymous sent this to me and I didn't think it was gonna hold up on my oily eyelids, but it's doing okay. Like, it's not creasing. Like, it seems like we might be at the at the start of potentially creasing, but like, it looks really good. And I, normally things like this don't last that long on my eyelids. So that's a bonus. And I didn't think that this was something that I was gonna get a lot of use out of, but I, I think I might wear it more. <laughs> like, I actually really like this. It was really easy to do. But yeah, the foundation, it's not, and also like it claims to be blurring, but I just feel like you can see my pores. Like you can see my pores from here and then you can really see my, I know that some of you don't believe that I have pores, but I do have pores. Like this foundation, the reason you don't think I have pores is because I typically use cosmetics that really do a really good job of hiding my pores. But like, this is like the biggest indentation, like this thing in my forehead right here. And typically I can blur that mostly away, but it's like really prevalent in this, it looks bad. I'm not gonna lie, I think it looks bad. All right, okay. I'm oily, We all, I've already discussed how I'm an oily person, so like the amount of oil production is very common for me. I don't powder when I do these projects, so that is totally fine, totally normal. But I have a question for anyone who's used a row and quad. Today, my I used Ego, the Smoke Reflect from Auric. Why I ask about the Rowan quads is that the Auric held up really well and I kind of like, it's creasing a little bit, but like, it's kind of cute. So if this is like what the Rowan quads, like the only thing that happened was like on the inner corner. I also didn't even use eyeshadow primer. So if this is kind of what the Rowan quads do, I think I could be into that. So that's a genuine question for those of you who have the Rowan quads. And I'm just going to leave that in this video because uh, why would I ask otherwise? I guess let's zoom you back in so we can look at the skin. Now it looks better, <laughs> always looks better on camera than it looks in real life. But it doesn't even, I don't even think it looks that good on camera. Like I think whatever the reflect, ref, like the light refracting blurring qualities only happen in camera. Because I feel like my pores look really, really prominent in my cheek area. And I said this in the check-in at like the four hour mark. Oh my God, I should tell you what time it is. So we finished around like 5.45 and so now it is 2.53. So we're like well over eight hours. I think we're closer to nine or we might be at nine. Again, oil production, good, I, is like normal. I don't see anything like breaking up. Maybe a little bit around my nose. But I also have to admit that like I was... I was like itchy around my nose today. So that also could have been just like being picked up from my finger. So I don't use concealer when I'm doing these. I think I've already mentioned that, but like, I think I don't like the way it sits under my eye. Also like, I don't really have dark circles under my eyes. I feel like that might be the fallout from the smoke reflect, but like, I don't even know if it's fallout from the smoke, but like my under eye looks weird. Like it looks crepey. You see like when it moves. Not not really into this. I think it's been clear since I did the sponge application that like I was not into this but I guess it bears repeating as this is my foundation review. Anyway I'm gonna powder it real quick to see if it bounces back or does anything like that would make me happy. Well um, I mean, the powder did what it was supposed to do. It didn't really affect it too far one way or another. It mattified. It is now more matte than it once was. I guess that's all I can say. <laughs> not, that, <laughs> not that you really need to see my final thoughts if you watched all of these check-ins, but I'm going to send it over to my... <laughs> To my final thoughts. <laughs> I don't recommend this product. I don't recommend that you buy this product. I'm not really sure who this product is for, to be quite honest. <laughs> and typically, if I try a foundation, I can see the good in it if I see it 
working really well for someone else who's not me, right? If I try a matte formula, I'm going to be in, in the formula. I can still find, I still find it delicious and beautiful, except for like the finish isn't for me. I can honestly be like everything but the finish is something that I really enjoy about this foundation. But with this particular foundation, it's not it for me. So first and foremost, this is a $58 formula. I have two more expensive formulas than this in my current foundation rotation. I try to keep my rotation to only four foundations and the four foundations I have right now are what's going to stick. Often if I try a new formula that I like better than one of the other four formulas that I already have in my collection, I will rotate the one out that I don't like as much as the one that I just reviewed and then I stay at four foundations. So I have both the Surat Dewdrop and the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation, which are considerably more expensive than this. This one's 58. I think the Chantecaille one is 82-ish. And the Surat one was $75 the last time I looked. I'll correct myself on the screen if I have some of those numbers wrong. The inflation that's happening right now is like something that I really don't keep up with. So like when I bought them, they were $75, they were $82. So I'm not really sure what they might cost at this juncture, but both more than this. And I would gladly spend full price on either one of those foundations than buy this one again because I just don't think this one is worth it and for $58 which is not an inexpensive foundation I'm not trying to say that you should get the full package and especially Hourglass is much more accessible physically like you can see it in Sephora's you can see it in Nordstrom than sometimes Chantecaille or Surat are so it'd be really nice if a very beautiful formula was easily accessible no matter where you were right no matter where you were if you were traveling and you like forgot your foundation or something like that it'd be really nice to have something accessible like that at best this is an okay foundation but it like it doesn't do it for me it says it has this sphere blurring technology but I didn't feel like it did that much blurring if anything I felt like this foundation was trying to mask things and that's actually not what I'm looking for like I did mention at the top of the video that I really love something that blurs a lot and I think both the Chantecaille and the Surat just as comparisons of things that I use a lot they do a lot of blurring they do a lot of tricking the eye into not seeing things rather than covering up my skin so oftentimes when I wear those I have quite a bit of redness on my face and oftentimes when I'm wearing those two foundations the redness does come through but my skin looks really soft and smooth and it does you know even out the redness just a little bit but my skin still looks like my skin and what I found that is that this kind of while it didn't feel heavy on the skin I felt like it, it feels like it looks heavy there's often times when I'm wearing a foundation that does this it kind of looks like I could just go and like uh, the whole mask of the makeup <laughs> would come off and that's how I felt like this looked and for having so many silicones in it and for me to know that like silicones are typically that ingredient that is supposed to like do that work of the blurring perhaps we may put too many in or we didn't strategically use the ones that we had because I just felt like I didn't get any of the blur. The other thing that this foundation promises that I didn't see was like a glow. I think the most I saw a glow was when I applied with my hands. You could kind of see the ambient lighting which we're going to talk about in a second I, but when I applied it with a sponge I felt like it made my face look completely flat and I'm totally fine with a foundation not really just like working with one application method that's why I try it three different ways just in case like the brand doesn't want you to apply it that way and it turns out that when you use it with a sponge it makes your face look flat so they don't recommend you using it with a sponge and that way people who like to apply their foundation with a sponge won't buy it because it's like that's not for them and then like if you like applying with a brush hopefully the foundation will work out with you but even when I did apply with the brush after applying it with the sponge the brush did bring some of it back it looked better with the brush but none of it none of the times zero times whenever I put this foundation on did it look like it does whenever I put on the ambient lighting powders so what I'm gonna actually do when I was doing my makeup today I did use dim light I am actually not wearing the hourglass foundation like typically when I'm doing my foundation reviews I like to wear the foundation that I'm reviewing but this one wasn't good enough this one didn't make the cut this one 
So I am wearing the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. So I'm just going to demo what dim light looks like for you on top of a foundation so you can see what I was expecting whenever I was trying this foundation. Hi, hello. I'm filming a different video, but this footage is relevant to what we're doing here. This is dim light from Hourglass. This is one of their ambient lighting powders. So it's part of the ambient collection, which is what this foundation is promising you're going to get like a similar glow and finish to. I like to use dim light as a finishing powder and so I'm going to use it as such and I'm going to do it to one side of my face so you can see what it's supposed to do and then I'm going to show you the other side of my face. I am not currently wearing the Hourglass foundation because I don't like it as you already know. I already feel like the other foundation is so much better but I'm just going to buff this into the skin just like really work it in. It does a little bit darkens my foundation, which that's just like the nature of it. Like it's a little bit darker than my complexion, so it's gonna do that. But you can see the soft focus that happened to the side of my face that isn't happening to the side of my face. And I think that the Hourglass Foundation wants you to think that this is what's gonna happen all over your face when you're using their foundation, but it doesn't. If my skin looked like this side of my face whenever I put on the Hourglass Foundation, it'd be great be great I would really love it but that's not what it does it's certainly not what it does and that's that's why I feel some kind of way about this foundation so <sighs> okay back to my other footage I do want to acknowledge that this foundation has more coverage than I want but I also think it's really important to know that that's always not a deterrent for me because I have tried full coverage foundations that I've really enjoyed and I thought looked really beautiful on the skin and some with like different finishes than this one promises. So if you like go back on my channel, I have reviewed quite a few foundations. I, got, I think I'm getting better at it. So like, uh, excuse the quality of some of the older ones. I have reviewed less expensive foundations than this Hourglass foundation, and I liked them better. So ones that come to mind are the ABH foundation. I felt like it looked really good on the skin. It was it's a very nice foundation and it has more coverage than I typically like to wear and it doesn't really blur. It's like one of those foundations where it's like the coverage is what's perfecting the skin and I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. It's like a really nice foundation. Another one, I don't think I did a review on this one on my channel, but the NARS Soft Matte Foundation, the one that comes in the up down, upside down squeezy tube, I really like that foundation and it's medium to full coverage and has a matte finish and I could see the beauty in that. And I just am not seeing it in this foundation and I think that's really devastating. Like it shouldn't be like that, especially at this price point. So I, I just wanted to make it clear that it wasn't just the coverage that was bothering me. It was all of the things and also that I am also able to enjoy foundations that aren't for me. So I just wanted to make that explicitly clear because I don't want you to think that I like bought a medium coverage foundation knowing that the coverage was going to be more than I like and just was getting ready to hate it because when I bring something into my makeup collection, I'm trying to only bring in things that I think I will enjoy, which is what I thought whenever I was purchasing this. This came out of my budget. I'm not going to get that money back. I'm not going to return it. I don't, especially because, you know, I do review things on my channel. I think it's a little, I don't think that's very kind of me to like buy something and return it. I also have friends who this might work out for, and that's very possible. You may have a different experience with this and you may have seen people have a different experience with this and they might have liked it and you might know how their foundation reviews go you might know their skin type better and you might trust what they have to say based on what you know about them but for me if you like any of the foundations that I listed that I keep in my rotation I don't think that you would like this foundation I just don't think you would and it would be really great to find like for me, a lesser costing foundation that really is beautiful and accessible to me. But that's not what happened. And I, I actually am kind of sad that I am leaving this review this way because I thought that this was going to be a really a worthwhile purchase for me. And it just turned out to not be. Before I wrap things up, I do want to talk about the shades just a little bit. Hourglass, in my opinion, historically runs deep in their shades for the lighter shades and this happens almost with any brand so i am i have fair skin pretty fair skin and sometimes i am the lightest in a foundation range even if that light isn't super light so like i'm not like always the most porcelain like i wouldn't say i'm like porcelain white but i thought hourglass wasn't gonna go light enough but their light shade was pretty light which you saw in my footage if you did watch day one I did actually have to go and exchange a shade because I was like this is too light but 
kind of in true hourglass fashion the 32 shades doesn't cover enough and that's really frustrating and you know it's kind of like leaving a bad taste in my mouth and I'm now associating this foundation with just like the brand in general and the kind of being like the final straw I think that's that I think I think we've done it and if you were a real one and you stuck around to the end I do have some exciting news if you were around during the nomination period of best of Pittsburgh I actually made it into the voting rounds of three categories best lifestyle influencer <laughs> thirst trap and best youtuber so that's all gonna start on august 1st i'll be posting about it on my community tab and make sure you follow me on instagram because i will be probably posting about it almost every day to make sure that people are voting so it'd be really cool to end up winning but i, I don't think i have a chance at all of actually winning any one of these categories so but i really appreciate it if any of you took the time to do that so be on the lookout for those links whenever they come up maybe i could win something and if you are new here and you watched all of that and you appreciated the way that I reviewed this product well why don't you stick around it's kind of how I talk about every product that comes through or that I already have in my collection I try to make sure that I'm regularly going through and trying things again to see if my opinion on them has changed or maybe I needed to clutter them that's like the vibe so I would love to have you subscribe if you aren't subscribed already and if you haven't liked this video make sure you do so before clicking out and I am also on patreon if you would like to support me there thank you hoties and remember to follow your hoat and you will find me thank you so much for watching I will see you in my next video bye for